Uh, hi everyone, welcome to this webinar, All Metrics in Latin America, uh, Increasing Research Dissemination and Discoverability. Uh, my name's Josh Clark, I'm Marketing Manager at Alt Metric. Uh, I'm just giving a brief introduction to the webinar, I'm just going to go over some housekeeping bits and introduce our speakers. Um, so just to, just to talk, tell you a little bit about who's presenting today, we have Patty Smith, who's the Senior Engagement Manager at Alt Metric. She's actually standing in for Andrea Goncalves, um, who unfortunately isn't able to make this webinar and, um, uh, and, and also um, the webinar later, which has meant that it's, uh, it's actually been cancelled. But um, we do have uh, Taini Oliveira uh, as well, who's the coordinator of scientific communication at the Federal uh, Fluminense University. So uh, those are our presenters for today. Um, just to tell you a bit about what we're going to cover, I'm just going to go over a bit of housekeeping just so um, so everything runs as smooth as possible. Uh, then I'll hand over to Patty to give a introduction to all metrics data and tools and Patty's also going to tell us a little bit about the uh, alt metric explorer platform that you may have heard of and give a short demo as well then Patty's going to hand over to Taney uh, who's going to give her presentation called beyond alternative metrics using alt metrics to measure impact and to find the circulation of science and she's going to talk a little bit uh, about alt metrics uh, and how she uses the data and tools um, in her role at her institution um, uh, so that's going to be really interesting and then at the end we'll have a question and answer uh, answer any questions that you have if you do have any questions please put them into the questions box which you should be able to see in your go to webinar panel um, so uh, yeah that, that, that's just in the little control panel that you have if you just type your message in there we'll try to get to them at the end uh, and give you some answers then so um, like I say just uh, Please place your question in the questions and answer box um, and do let us know there or in the chat box if you can't hear what we're presenting or see our slides uh, just because we can't tell on our end um, but um, just that you know also that this webinar will be recorded and I will be uh, sending around a recording to all the registrants um, tomorrow hopefully in an email and also it will be posted to the Altmetric YouTube and Figshare channels uh, so you will be able to see the recording there just in case you do need to leave the webinar at any point uh, you can you can uh, see the recording at a later date so uh, without further ado I'm going to hand over to our first speaker Patty who's just going to give us uh, an introduction to Altmetrics and the data and tools so just going to hand over to Patty now All right, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, Patty. good. <laughs> All right, well, oops, let me present. Okay, thanks, Josh. Um, so, hello, everybody. Thanks for attending today. As Josh mentioned, my name is Patty Smith, and I'm the Senior Engagement Manager at Altmetric. And I'm going to go over a bit um, about Altmetric's data today and also talk a bit more generally about what alternative metrics are. Because um, that's a common question um, that I encounter in my work is, you know, what are Altmetrics exactly? A lot of people have heard about them um, now, but they still are relatively new um, to many people. So, we'll start off by going over some Altmetric basics um, and what alternative metrics are before diving into altmetrics specifically and the altmetric donut in our platform. A bit about terminology that I might use throughout the presentation or that you might see in some of our training materials and documentation online. Um, so if you see something or if I say output, um, I'm simply talking about an individual research product. So it's really easy to default to calling everything an article. Um, but we don't only produce articles um, as research products. We create so many different things that, that contribute to the scholarly body, body of work, such as curricula, um, data sets, you know, images, videos. So it's not just limited to journal articles. So if I say output, I'm simply referring to that individual research product. Uh, if I mention attention source or source, this is the digital forum or platform where research is shared. So this could be on social media like Facebook or Twitter. This could be in news outlets, um, policy documents, websites. Um, so those are sources of attention. 
And then a mention or an altmetric mention is simply a share, a reference to, or engagement with that digitally published research output online. Okay, so what are altmetrics? Um, so here we have a simple definition of what altmetrics are. So altmetrics are indicators of non-traditional attention and engagement with digitally published research and scholarship. So the ALT does stand for alternative. So altmetrics is alternative metrics. I have seen some people um, list altmetrics as meaning article level metrics, um, but it does mean alternative metrics. So these are data that explain both the volume and nature of attention research has received online. Um, so how many people are sharing or engaging with the scholarly output and where that engagement is happening. And altmetrics provide evidence of engagement with diverse audiences and potential downstream impact. Um, so here we're going beyond just academia. Um, so we're looking at how the public is engaging with research, how funders are engaging with research, government organizations, et cetera. So we're going on just going beyond just the scholarly community. Um, and altmetrics are intended to be complementary to bibliometrics or citation-based metrics. So they're not trying to replace the H index or journal impact factor or even compete with them. Um, altmetrics are intended to be used alongside these citation-based metrics to tell a more complete story um, of research and, and how people are using research and the potential impact that it is having. Um, and a big um, difference between altmetrics and traditional metrics or citation-based metrics is the time factor. So citations can take a very long time to accrue. So and it depends on the discipline, but they can take two to five years to start to accrue on papers that have been published. Whereas altmetrics offer immediate attention. Um, so if you publish a paper today, you can already start to see um, you know, Twitter and, and news attention um, the same day or just tomorrow. So altmetrics offer that immediate feedback about how people are interacting with your research. Um, so this is really great for everybody, um, helps you tell a more complete story about your research, but I think it's especially great for early career researchers um, because we know it takes a very long time uh, for, publish or for research to be conducted and then published, uh, and so sometimes early career researchers have a tough time kind of telling the story of their work uh, and showing that impact. So Altmetrics can help them uh, form a more comprehensive view on their CV um, and resume and that sort of thing. And altmetrics are also really great to be used in grant applications as well. Um, so you can show uh, and demonstrate the, the impact that your recently published work is having uh, if you're applying for a grant, for example. And just to give you an idea of the volume uh, of, of data that we track, um, so Altmetric tracks thousands of mentions each day. So a, re a research output is mentioned every 0.9 seconds with 245,000 new mentions a day and 26,000 unique outputs are mentioned each day. So it's really high volumes of attention. Um, and I really like this visualization here kind of showing uh, the research attention cycle. Uh, so on the horizontal axis we see um, time since publication, and on the vertical axis we see volume of attention. So you can see that hours um, or days after research is published, we start to see tweets appearing, people sharing that work on social media, um, news outlets start to pick up that research right away well, or right away as well, and it's featured in the mass media. Um, people start to really read and digest it, maybe comment on, on blogs or write blog posts about the research days later. Um, Wikipedia articles are then updated within the following weeks of research being published. And you see much further down the line, uh, months or years later um, is when citations begin to accrue. Okay, so now we're going to talk a little bit more about altmetric specifically um, and the altmetric attention score. So you may have seen uh, the altmetric donut, which is on the right side of the screen here. Um, so this very colorful um, donut. Uh, so each color represents a different type of attention. So we can see that purple is policy documents, red is news attention, yellow is blogs, so on and so forth. So we have 17 categories comprising tens of thousands of unique audience channels. Um, so here's another example of a donut that you might see. Um, so the more uh, the more colors you see in a donut, um, the more diverse types of attention we do see. So for example, if you saw a donut that was completely light blue, um, that would be an indication that that output has only Twitter attention. Or if it was only orange, uh, that only has patent attention, for example. Um, and then the score is a weighted score. So you can see on the right side of the screen um, a bit of a snapshot of how our weighting occurs. So um, 
so a news uh, news mention is going to carry a higher weight than a blog or a Twitter uh, mention, for example. But we do take other things into account with the weighting of the Elmetric Attention Score. Um, so, for example, uh, you can, if you tweet about your own research, you know, a hundred times from from your Twitter account, we're still only going to count that one time towards your your altmetric attention score. Um, or uh, if the BBC News um, or the New York Times, for example, if they are sharing and citing your work, that's going to carry heavier weight than perhaps a local um, news station or syndicated publication, for example. Um, so there is more that goes into the score and the score weighting, um, and we have further documentation about that on our website too. Um, but we always encourage people to kind of look beyond the altmetric attention score uh, because the context is key. And just because something has a high altmetric attention score does not mean that it's positive impact, positive attention, or an indication of the quality of that research. So we always want to look at what people are saying, not just at the numbers, because really the number just represents the amount of attention, the volume. Um, it answers the question of how many or how much um, and not uh, why people are mentioning that work. So here's one example of that. So we see this paper has a really high um, altmetric attention score and has received diverse attention across the board. Um, but you can see here in this tweet on the screen uh, is the reason that this paper received so much attention is because uh, the authors left in this phrase, should we cite the crappy Gabor paper here? So somehow this paper made it through publication um, and editing and everything and that, that phrase unfortunately got left in the publication. Um, I mean, the science could be good in this paper as well, um, but that's the reason that this paper got so much attention is because of that mistake. But here's a more serious example uh, of uh, always wanting to dig into the actual type of attention that the paper is receiving. Um, so we can see here that this paper has been uh, cited over 1,500 times, so very, very highly cited paper. Um, and it also has an altmetric attention score of over 3,000. So it's been featured in hundreds of news articles, hundreds of blogs, policy documents, patents, um, et cetera. So just glancing at this, you might think that this is a really good paper because it's been shared um, far and wide and discussed and cited quite frequently. Um, but this is actually the infamous uh, Lancet paper linking vaccines to autism. Um, so we know that this is not good work, this is not good research or quality research, um, and so we always want to make sure we're digging into those questions of who is sharing the research, what are they sharing, when, where, and why that is happening. Because the quantitative numbers of how many citations or, or how high is the altmetric, or the altmetric attention score, that just answers the question of how many or how much. Okay, so that was a very brief overview um, of altmetrics. And now I have a few moments to uh, go into a live demonstration of the Altmetric Explorer. Um, let's see if it'll open. Okay, now hopefully you can still see my screen here. Um, and fair warning that this demonstration uh, of showing the Altmetric Explorer usually takes, um, you know, half an hour to an hour to really go over some good examples, and I have about five minutes here. Um, so I'll show you some highlights uh, of some features that I use quite frequently just to give you an idea um, of the capabilities that the Altmetric Explorer has. Um, so if you log into the, Alt the Altmetric Explorer, you should land on this highlights page. And this just offers a snapshot of the, the data that we track. So we can see that we're tracking over 12.2 million outputs that have some sort of attention associated with them. Um, up here in the right-hand corner, we have a quick search where you could search for a known author um, or a title of uh, an output, for example. Um, but here, if you click this edit search button, this brings you to our advanced search, um, which is a bit overwhelming when you first glance at it. We have a lot of different ways that we can um, perform an advanced search. So I'll show you a few things that I do commonly. Um, so we can do a keyword search. So for example, if I wanted to search for research about wildfires, I could simply type in wildfires here. We also have uh, subjects or field of research classifications, and this is a really powerful way to search um, search for research. So I could start typing in, uh, you know, forestry sciences or maybe environmental. If I'm looking for wildfire research, so I can see all these different field of research classifications, and I can actually build. Um, a custom search uh, for these different fields of research. So that is something that I do quite often as well. 
Uh, we can also search by um, institution or affiliation. So if I wanted to look at what maybe different forestry schools or universities um, are publishing, I could uh, type in that that known university that I want that I want to dig into what they're publishing, and I could limit to to that. So that's really great. Um, I can limit to open access outputs only, uh, which is a new feature. Um, if I have a list of scholarly identifiers, such as um, a list of PMIDs or uh, DOIs or ISBNs, up to 25,000 scholarly identifiers can be pasted into this box um, and searched. So if you have known items that you want to perform a, a custom search for, you could paste those in here and run that search very quickly and easily. If you publish in biomedicine, you can actually recreate uh, a PubMed query directly within our interface. Um, so that is awesome for people who are, are, are working in biomedicine. Um, and as you can see, we have tons of different options. Um, the list goes on of ways you can do an advanced search. Another recent um, addition to, to the Explorer is to search by funders. So you can actually search for, for funders and take a look at their funded research and see how people are discussing that funded research. Um, but just as an, an example, I'll just do a quick um, keyword search for wildfires. And so we can see now that we're looking at over 1,700 outputs that have attention as opposed to 12 million. Uh, so that narrows it down a little bit. Um, so I can toggle over to this research outputs tab and I can get a snapshot of, of the different outputs that have altmetric attention. Uh, it defaults to this grid view, but I can uh, I like to change it to this list view because then I can see the different universities and affiliations of people um, who are publishing this, this work so we can see the, where the research is kind of coming out of. Um, and I can also see the different subject areas that uh, these, these outputs are classified as. So I get, can get an idea of, of those fields. But if I click into any one of these, um, these outputs, I'll be taking into the altmetric details page. And so we get a little snapshot of, of what uh, this attention is. So we can see there's news attention, blogs, policy, Twitter, et cetera. Um, then I can actually dig into any of these mentions by clicking on these links or by toggling through the tabs up at the top of the screen. So I can see the news articles that have uh, cited this research and I can actually click on any of these links and be taken directly to uh, that, that news article to see how this research is being mentioned and cited. Um, same with policy documents. So this was cited in four different policy documents, including the UK Parliament. Um, so I can click through to this and, and scan through the policy document to see how this research is informing that change in policy. Um, so this is kind of the area, the Altmetric Details page is where you can really dig into that qualitative information and get an idea of the sen sentiment of how people are using, um, using this research, discussing about it online, um, and how it might be potentially making uh, impact in, in research. Um, and here's Twitter as well. Um, so we can see the tweets that people are tweeting and we can see the number of followers that they have um, so that can give you a good idea of public sentiment as well. Um, very quick overview of the research outputs tab. Um, we have the timeline view as well. Um, so as the name suggests, you can view things on a timeline. Uh, we can toggle over to looking at the last year of attention really quickly. Um, and so we, oftentimes we see spikes in attention. Uh, so you might want to dig in to see why are these spikes in attention happening? How are people talking about research at these times? Um, and with this wildfire search that I'm performing, uh, oftentimes we actually see these spikes in attention occur uh, when wildfires are actually happening. Um, so people, uh, there's really an uptick in mass media and social media and people discussing these online when we see those events happening. So it's a kind of a cool way to dig into, um, into the research. We have our demographics tab as well, where we can look at where in the world people are tweeting, um, Facebooking uh, about research, but we can also dig into where these news stories are coming out of. So we get a quick snapshot of geography of, of news outlets that are talking about wildfires and where that is happening and also policy documents as well. And I should mention that any of these tabs that I'm going through, you can download these results as a CSV file to do further analysis. Um, so you'll see that on the timeline view, the research outputs view, et cetera. Um, you'll see the export this tab as a CSV. Um, journals, I'll mention this really quickly so we can see where wildfire research is being published commonly. Um, so this is another thing that is, is good to look at. And then finally, I'll end with the mentions tab. So this is actually a very powerful tab um, that it, it, 
there's a lot of ways you can search using the mentions tab. So I can add a source that I'm interested in. If I'm only interested in news attention and po perhaps policy documents, I can add a certain time frame in here, search for mentions from a certain country. For example, I can click apply and then actually see all those research outputs um, with my limits applied. Um, but I'll show one more example for the mentions tab just to show you how powerful it, it can actually be. Um, is there actually a search I just did the other day um, I'll click this. I saved this search, which I'll show you how to do in a second. But I was actually working with someone to try and identify news stories and blog posts in um, economic research. So in the advanced search, we searched for economics related field of research classification codes. So we can see economics, applied economics, etc. Um, so we ran that search. And then I filtered by news stories and blog posts. And then I filtered by Spanish speaking countries only. Um, so we were able to dig into the different uh, news outlets that are, uh, are publishing uh, news, uh, et cetera, that are talking about economics research. Um, so this is a real life example of, of an advanced search that I crafted with somebody. Um, and I was able to quickly save this search so I could run it again um, and edit it if I needed to. And so over here on the left side of the page, um, I can see my Spanish speaking countries ser uh, search has been saved. I can choose to rerun that search simply by clicking on this link. I can have uh, updates emailed to me daily, weekly, or monthly. And then I can actually create a shareable report that I can share with anybody, um, even if they don't have access to the Altmetric Explorer. Um, so that was a very, very quick overview of the Altmetric Explorer. But hopefully, as you see, there are many, many different ways to search for research and to kind of get that information about how people are discussing research online and those potential downstream impacts. Um, so with that, um, I'll finish up my presentation, see if I can get out of my full screen mode, um, and then hand it over to our next presenter. I seem to have lost my screen here. Okay, oh, there we go. Lost the panel for a second. Okay. Hello. Hello, are you hearing me? Yep, we can yes, hear you. Indeed. Okay, nice. Now, thank you for joining us in this uh, webinar. I am Tayana Oliveira. I am a researcher in communication field. Uh, from Federal Fluminense University. Uh, and what I am going to talk today is uh, how to use the altmetric data in different sectors of the universities. Um, although um, Josh present um, be uh, as a, a coordinator of the scientific journals, I I don't have just this role in my university uh, as every uh, employee. Uh, of the university, we have different roles to do um, into the institution. So I have now uh, three uh, main roles. Uh, one of them is uh, I am member of the indicator developer uh, work group of the, the university. I am also coordinator of the, the journals and the scientific communication of the university. And I am also professor in research in the field of communication focus on uh, my interest is related to the scientific circulation um, so uh, I am going to show how I can use the altmetric data in these three uh, main roles of my activities. Just to give you a, a brief context, uh, uh, what the, the importance of the, the data of uh, the altmetric data can give us. Uh, now in Brazil, we are facing a, a, a complicated, a delicated moment. Uh, we are facing some cuts uh, and some attacks uh, against the university. It's not just attacks uh, against the, the scientific knowledge, but the structural uh, uh, attacks against the, the structure of the university. Uh, since 2016, we have uh, facing uh, huge cuts that turn inviable to sustain the, the university. Recently, uh, our president Jair Bolsonaro said that uh, he, uh, the government, uh, will cut more money from from the uh, for the university, uh, arguing that what we do 
into the university, it's a kind of mess. Uh, but some research show us that 90% of uh, uh, science, technology, and the inno innovation development in Brazil uh, came from uh, came from the, the the public university. So, how we can use the altmetric data to show that we don't do mess, that we just do uh, quality science? Uh, how we can use the altmetric data to dialogue with society? Uh, so, uh, the first step uh, that uh, we have been done uh, in the university with this uh, developer uh, group, working group to uh, develop alternative indicators for the university is to understand how the university, uh, how the outputs of the university uh, are circulating in different ways. So, uh, in the grid, I put in the into the affiliation um, information about my university uh, federal Fluminense University and then I uh, the altmetric platform uh, gave me this kind of data uh, and the how we can see this uh, in the last two years, we have uh, different uh, circulations in news and blogs and policies patents uh, and also in social media uh, so what we can do with this kind of data? Uh, the first step of what we have been done is uh, distribute uh, guidelines to local partners, newspapers, uh, and the widely circulated newspapers through media, uh, super intendance sector. Uh, we do some news about the university, uh, about um, how our outputs are being uh, cited in different uh, uh, platforms and different uh, spheres, uh, and then gave this kind of report to our sector of communication, and then they distribute to uh, the actors uh, who are interested in this kind of information. We also produce uh, institutional report to the own university to be uh, disseminated in our communication uh, channels. Just a minute. I am sorry here. And now as a journals coordinator, uh, under my responsibility, I have a 43 journals, scientific journals in different fields. Uh, and I, uh, one of my uh, role, one of my, my responsibility is to develop some strategies uh, for visibility of our outputs. So uh, what I can do with Outmetric platform to uh, reach my uh, objective. Uh, so I use uh, the DOI prefix to look uh, uh, how our universities are circulating, and also we can do um, how you can see here, paste a list of journal ESSNs and then run research. And then I have this kind of data. I started this um, uh, role in my university, this work in my university in 2017, uh, when I started to validate the DOI and how we can observe here. Since then, uh, the, the data of the, the journals could be uh, collected by the, the automatic platform. And since the beginning of the, this year, we have been investing uh, in communication, in strategic communication to to improve the visibility and the circulation of the, our uh, journals, our scientific outputs. And since then, we have been uh, this um, data uh, increasing. Uh, but what I, we can do uh, with this kind of information? Uh, the second step of this work is to understand who are the people, who are the actors uh, who are seating us. Uh, so we, we um, developed a, a, a some kind of um, uh, 
a list of clients in newspapers and we passed to contact them to uh, present our uh, newest outputs in the in our journals um, another thing that we have been uh, done is to understand the, the ways that these kind of outputs are circulating in social science. Uh, uh, through the, the automatic platform, uh, we export the CSV uh, table and uh, after a, a treatment of data, uh, we generated this, this graph uh, to identify who are the, the most important actors in the, the networks uh, who have some kind of influence in social media. Uh, of course, the, the, uh, the, the main uh, actors which we have a, a, a stronger relation is uh, with the own journals, uh, but also with some kind of uh, digital influencers in these uh, social networks that help us to um, improve the circulation of our science. So uh, what we have been done is to contact these researchers uh, that uh, uh, help us to spread uh, the scientific outputs in social networks to recognize uh, recognizing the, the, their role uh, to our communication, to our scientific communication, uh, and then uh, use them, uh, contacting them to spread the newest uh, and related research that they uh, shared before. Now, as a research, uh, I, when I talk about Altmetrics with my peers, with uh, other researchers, uh, the first thing they ask me is, oh, that's very interesting. I can see how my outputs, my scientific outputs are circulating. I can see how my um, articles and my papers are circulating. but what I can do with this platform uh, beyond to see the metrics. Uh, the, pl the platform is really important to understand the context, to understand how we can uh, develop some strategies for our own research. Uh, as I said before, one of my interests is to understand the circulation of scientific communication in the Global South, uh, but also to understand the disputes over scientific information, not only in social, social media, but in other spheres. Uh, so what I did is to put uh, um, an example of um, a bus agenda, uh, like the fake news, uh, issue. So I put here the fake news as a keyword. Uh, I select the, the to understand uh, how the, the 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 term, how the the uh, concept of fake news were being uh, circulating the last years, and then I run the the research. Uh, and then I started to filter the. Um, through the, the automatic platform to understand uh, what the people have been uh, talking about the fake news, uh, what the public policies have been citing the outputs uh, about fake news, and that this kind of information give us some insights to how we can work on this research, this issue. Um, it's a way to improve uh, the dialogue with uh, another peers. Uh, another example that uh, I have been done is to understand, uh, is to under identify the circulation uh, and to understand the outmetric as the first layer of information. Uh, I have been working with uh, uh, the, the understanding how to uh, see how to measure, uh, not just to measure, but how to comprehend the uh, circulation of uh, policies evaluation. When we 
talk about public policies, we have a different uh, steps uh, of the, the public policies and how science can uh, help to uh, improve, how help to develop some public policies. The first one is the problem in the identification. Uh, social science is very important in this step of the, the, the public policy cycle um, because it's a way that uh, the, the, the social science uh, help us to understand the, the, the society, uh, to help to understand the problems in society. Uh, after that, the, another step in the, the public policies um, cycle it's the agenda setting uh, when the, the the problem is started to spread uh, not just in public spheres but also in media and scientific authority is really important to this step because it's a way to validate the problem to see how we can look into the problem identify identified before. Uh, the policy formulations when the reference of scientific outputs is really important uh, to develop the, 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 the public policies and the public uh, implementation and then the policy evaluation and, and the, the, the role of the scientist in this step it's really important uh, because uh, we have some kind of scientific rigor uh, that can reduce the amount of decision based only in partidary uh, interest. Uh, so it's, it's really interesting uh, to understand how this kind of policy evaluation uh, made by the scientists are circulating because when we see this kind of data, we can understand uh, more uh, the only implement the, not only the implementation, but the disputes again the, the, the public policies. Uh, I did um, a research before with some colleagues uh, and we uh, uh, started to develop some mixed methods uh, beyond the alt matrix, uh, beyond the, 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 the first layer of information to uh, incorporate the social listening, to incorporate uh, social networks analysis uh, and uh, content analysis with the, the, the data that uh, Outmetric platform uh, gave, um, gave us. And uh, what we can uh, been observe is some kind of uh, context, uh, some kind of uh, dialogue, important dialogue uh, about the evaluation of the public science, uh, the, the public policies made by scientists that show us how the society, the society are uh, is understanding um, the, the, the circulation of the public policies. Uh, so with this kind of mixed methods, we can uh, find uh, the actors, the type of speech to, uh, they promote, what are the discurs discursive disputes, uh, if there is some kind of the leg delegitimation of the scientific productions and uh, we can develop more methods to make that to go deeper into the, the data um, the altmetric data so um, that's it thank you so much uh, here's my contact and if you have any question I am uh, available <laughs>